The Stack, People, Business, Technology, with Dan Tomaszewski of Everything MSP. Hey, Dan Tomaszewski here with Everything MSP. Hope you're doing well. I have a special guest here at Brian Gunther with the Exceed Consulting, Exceed Cyber, I should say. And um, you're based out of the DC area. That's right. And, uh, you know, we're here in the fact, um, you know, it's networking, learning, and that's the name of the list, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Here at CompTIA Channel Con here in uh, beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Today, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, not that we've seen much of the outside. No, <laughs> no. I mean, we're learning. You know, we're learning, we're networking. And, uh, you know, one of the things that often comes up on our MSB discussion group is CMS. And there's, you know, there's so much to it. Um, I guess what I'd like to start out is, is it? Yeah, that's a great question. So let's start with the foundation, right? So CMMC stands for Cybersecurity and Maturity Model Certification. Sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, we always like to joke here and say that uh, the DOD chronomizes everything, right? They have an acronym for everything. Yeah. That they do. And so what does CMMC where they come from? So let's just foundation of questions. CMMC is a framework been developed that was started in these about five six years ago okay by the department of defense in correlation with uh, uh the software engineering institute providing in Mellon, as well as johns hopkins university a lot of really bad brains okay we put this thing together and the reason that this happened was as eod has what's called event supply chain with the defense industrial rights okay it consists of hundreds of thousands of areas as um who really by actually by law and like supported by regulation need to safeguard they, that the DOD considers sensitive, right? Yeah. They want to make sure it's safeguarded. That's not just taken or freely available that are either our adversaries or taken or whatever. Yeah, I mean, those risks are substantial, right? Because we're talking about DOD. You know, we're yeah. talking about the type of information we don't want in adversaries. And, you know, and, you know, that just blows down to so many type of organizations, manufacturers that are supporting that. Uh, so it's it's really uh, an area that the amount of exposure is tremendous. Absolutely, that's that's a really well well yeah. said. And I'll say you, you used the word slow down. I want to actually buck up. Certainly, right. So the DoD really cares about this information being in safeguard the term that they use. And some of our audience may be familiar with the concept of NIST eight hundred one seventy one or yeah. through different revisions now one seventy two, and uh, you know there's a the whole bevy of control, but you know over a hundred of them that really apply here. So really, you want to get an idea. What is CMMC really? Just think of this data under 171 or 172 now with the new iterations. Uh, 171's number three currently, and there's 100 different controls. Really what CMMC wants, it's identifying, implementing those controls within a defense contract with information system. Right? Okay. And again, just to be very clear, these are not government systems. These are the information, the private information contractor that has this data that resides somewhere in their system, right? That had right. safeguard. First of all, identified, and then safeguarded, and then ultimately prevented from leaking out that. Right. That's the right. idea. And so what CMMC does, that part is really uh, the regulation. It's been around for many years. Okay. EFAR 7012, EFAR 7012. You want to get geeky, look it up. You know, there's more numbers to this, yeah. right? Yeah. You can all geek out on it. But ultimately, that's actually been part of these contracts for many, many years. Just a lot of defense contractors didn't know about it. It's not being enforced. So that's a real problem. Okay. And so as an MSP that's working with an organization that is working with the Department of Defense or, you know, whatever the case may be, um, you know, how much do they have to know about those uh, regulations? Yeah. So the MSPs themselves, right? So they can really dig into that question comes what they want to come to me, right? Subject matter experts on that itself. But what do they need to know? They need to know, first of all, that it's a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that they, that first of all, their clients are if they're in the defense industrial base. Let's say they're a manufacturer, right? It's a right. good example. Uh, maybe they're a subcontractor. And so for those of the audience who don't know what a crime versus a sub is, you may generally know that. You think of terms like a general contractor, you build a house. Sure. Do you have a GC? Yep. You got subs, you got the person that did framing and then you got a company to electrical, plumbing. The same thing happens with the DOD, defense contractors, or any, really any government Okay. right? You got a prime, they have the direct relationship contract with the DOD, right? Then they have these whole downstream subcontracts, first tier, second tier, third tier, right? These rules apply to all of them, called okay. flow down requirements, right? 
flow down to the MSP? Well, it's a great question. I'm glad that you asked that. And so the short answer is yes, right? So yes, it does flow to the MSP. So that brings on a whole new world for that MSP. Paris. And really the MSP in this case, and again, I, I hope I'm not scaring too many of our audience here. Yeah. It's, it's true. So the MSP and, and CMMC speak is called the external service provider, or ESP. Okay. That's the term that thing is. And an ESP must be functionally at the same maturity level as a, as a client, as a defense contract. Okay. Because here's the thing. Here's why, right? Um, think about this. Use an MSP. We all know those of you who are security minded understand. Sure. MSP effectively is an attack vector, essentially a supply chain of risk right. to their customer base. Right. Fair, right? Very fair. And, and so ultimately, think about this. You have meaningful access to all these customer systems. So it makes sense. If you think about this, kind of extrapolate this out. Yeah. It makes sense that the MSP itself needs to be protected and guarded at least as well sure. as their clients. Right. To protect the data because they could be defensive. Right. Um, you know, ultimately, when you think about what an uh, MSP needs to do, you know, when you mentioned, you know, don't want to steer any of our audience. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you should run away from those opportunities, right? That's true, right? Shouldn't run away from that, but you really have to consider very carefully whether that's a space you want to be in, whether, because they're, look, they're substantial investment. You know, sure. There's different levels of CMMC. seats, maturity level one, two, and three. Right. We don't see three that much in our space very much, but think of maturity level one. That means you have to protect what it called or implement 17 to oh, security practices. Okay. Out of the, this day, number one, seven, one, three more, right? Or if you have maturity level two, uh, under this hat. Now, the MSP themselves, I won't get into the weeds too much here, because it's very easy to kind of dive to kind of break. Right. You want to keep high level. Um, what you need to realize with the MSP is <clears throat> what's what's the threat to you? What's the risk? What else, what's the opportunity? Hey, do I have a lot of defense contractors in my stable of clients who I currently serve? Are they talking to me about this yet? Are they not? Should I approach them about it? Should I be a thought right. in that realm? Yeah. Should I be approaching them and talking with them about what the opportunities are? I mean, there's, so there's still, it's not like this is a, uh, scenario where, you know, okay, everybody had a date that this needed to be done by and pretty much everybody's got it done. I mean, there's still many opportunities out there. There's many organizations that aren't where they need to be, correct? Yes and no. Okay. It's a great question, but yes and no. So there is a, a, a date with CMMC and I want to be very clear about the CMMC portion of that. That really bolts on to the assessment to the existing regulation, regulation ER 7012 early. Yeah. That started really in 2017, rolling into the federal defense contracts. Okay. That regulation yeah. already meant that all there is defense contracts. Okay. And really, the CMC part is really just a final assessment. Having a what's called certified third party assessment organization, or C3PAO, yeah. by the way, not related to R2D2. Okay. Just saying that. <laughs> right. These yeah. C3PAOs come and give you the final. It's just the end of the road. Just think of like a SOC 2 type 2 auditor, ISO 27001. Sure. Same idea. We have an actual certified water fleets. That is all that CMMC really did. They're closing the, the loop at the end of the road. Right. These requirements have already been the last, which is why the DOD really, frankly, a little bit, in my opinion, foolishly thinks it's not a big deal. I've already done all this shit. Yeah. Or, right. You've already <laughs> done all this stuff. Yeah. Government contract. But the reality is they haven't because there was no enforcement. There was no hammer. So that enforcement component is obviously going to drive opportunity for MSP to be able to help bring uh, that organization to the standards that are required. Absolutely. That's that's 100% true. So not only is there an opportunity for line, I'll get to that in a second, but the MSP themselves can, can be thought leaders to have a, a, a conversation with their clients uh, proactively, ideally, and say, yeah. look, are you guys, what are you guys doing about CMMC? If right. you know their defense contractor, they 100% have to do something related. Now, the level of pitch yep. that will vary depending on what kind of information that's start, whether it's federal contract information, or CI, or controlled, unclassified, what's called CUI, that resides on these non federal systems, right? Right. And so it depends and it varies. Again, that's getting more into the muck of it all. However, the opportunity is pretty big because now I can say, listen, I can help you bring in a, a partner, for example. Now, the question becomes, do you want to become a CMC expert in your own MSP, right. which you can choose to do. 
and learn all about that. How do you live? Yeah. Or do you bring in a partner like Cyber that can help you with that, empower you, and effectively create opportunity for using them? Sure. Free to more or less, we should have like, you know, we do a gap assessment, identify what's missing, right? Right. What are all the gaps? What's not done? Okay. Guess what we do? Well, we help the company. Um, we, we have director of the HR. Right. We knock off the clients and listen, you got to close all these gaps. Where are they going to charge you to do the work? Yeah. Who's that? The MSP. Yeah. So the MSP will make a lot of money project work and potentially also maintenance work in some other ways that have to be has to be maintained and follow through. Sure. The, you know, what, what does the MSP really need, need to take into consideration and looking at whether they want to venture down that path of working with those that are under those requirements? Minus. The first question they want to ask themselves is, where is this? Right? Yeah. Because again, they themselves have to functionally mature at the same levels. In, you know, not necessarily getting specific into the numbers, but like how substantial is that loss? Yeah, it can be fairly substantial, right? Because you have to go through more or less, not exactly, because you yourself are not holding the sensitive data in your, your ISP systems. Yep. But again, you're a conduit. Sure. So that's why the functional maturity level has to be a part of the client. That's what's so critical. Mm-hmm. Um, to answer your question, about as far as cost goes, it's fair to say it would start somewhere in the $50,000 range, could go up to $100,000 or more okay. with the MSP. First of all, go through the proper process, get themselves functional compliant. If they then also want to get themselves assessed by this R2D2 screen, right? Yeah, CDFAO, right. The CDFAO, the auditors at the end of the road, that's going to add more else as well. But that will also get the final signature of the DUD saying, hey, this external service provider, MSP, right. has done all the work and certified. Okay. Play. And so, but it, it's going to be easily 50, maybe 100K okay, or more, depending on your. So you got to really identify, okay, number one, how many of our clients fall into this category? Um, in what are our thoughts moving forward to be able to drive more business in that area, right? Because you've got to look at that ROI. Yeah, and again, if you have a lot of defense contractor clients that say, okay, I have three, four, five, or maybe 10 or whatever, you're in a very defense heading in area because there's certain pockets around the country yeah. that just sort of, uh, like, from spot, all the amount of Right, or you know, lots of lots of business there. I do Washington DC metro region, tons of gut banks. Yeah. So it's in the area where there's a lot of heavy concentration, you you could get you could have a lot of defense clients. It's in my opinion, absolutely worth it. You know, because there's so much opportunity. And I would say, I'm gonna look right at the camera, don't be scared, right? Right. Know that there's help out there. There's yeah. people that can help with this. But there's absolutely a ton of, you know, money. There's opportunity to make a lot of money in the process. And you can do so by really effectively, by truly helping. Um, so how, let's talk a little bit about your organization and how you do help. What, you know, let's look at that value that provides. So, you know, they might say, you know, hey, I, I see opportunity here. I want to venture down this path. Um, yeah, you know, you as a partner, what is that? Yeah, I I'm, I'm appreciate you asking that. So the way that we look at this is saying, again, we want to empower a gift to engage in relationships like this that are affected that that work for them. Okay. And so, and I thought a lot about this how can I do this, right? Well, well, it makes sense to create a partner program. Sure. For MSPs and help them engage, uh, uh, you know, work with us in order to say, hey, listen, we, you know, we're MSP. We don't know all this behind stuff. Yeah. We want to work with somebody who does know that who's a subject matter expert, has deep experience in that, and knows how to do work. So that's really where the conversation building a program so we created a partner program and it's it's quite simply like it, you log in you register you become a partner and you sign up you register with the of a you already have a they need cmmc okay cool register them as lead right but why would you want to work with us? that's really the question how are we different two ways one of them is first of all we're going to make sure that you understand all the risks associated for you yeah and secondly it's actually free secondly we're going to talk about how we're going to help you make money right okay. we talked about that work uh and and thirdly is we're not going to be uh, rep we're going to stay in our swim lane right we do the compliance work okay that's what we do we're essentially project managing and these guiding you think of, think of this as a chirp as a mountain guy right yeah and seek them over the mountain it's like the other end of the right you now you see that the sun the sunrise and all that and that's really what it's all about we stay in our lane and our job is to make you 
right? Yeah. Make you look good. We also, by the way, will pay the MSP, the referring MSP commission, okay, on the revenue that we bring in through the direct engagement client. Gotcha. And here's what's really cool. Our engagement is such that we work directly with the customer. Okay. So we have a direct relation with the client. Again, for instance, you have swim lane, right? We sure. Almost no coach here, right? Yeah. Direct engagement with the customer in our process is very simply this. Like, look, we're going to work with you. We're going to tell the client, hey, listen, here are all the apps you've identified. Here's all the work that has to be done. Um, and you need to go talk to your MSP to do all this work. Okay. We are, as, as a compliance guy, are telling the client what to do. It's not the MSP telling them what to do, which you know is it's like such a big banging difference. your head against the wall. You know how it yeah. is, right? Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah. If the communication, the whole, it's coming from the authority who they hire to do the compliance work, the client hire yeah. to make sure that as you MSP, they need to do more work. This makes, again, this helps everyone. The client gets help. They raised up their their level of uh, you know compliance. Uh, we get help because we can help customers with their compliance, and the MSP wins too. And yes. everybody, I was going to ask to you know from an ownership perspective, I mean, we who's responsible? I mean, there's the client that ultimately at the end of the day is responsible. But as we all know, a lot of times clients feel like you know hey, you're my technology provider, um, you have our back, and you know you should have taken care of this or you should know about this, right? I mean, so where, you know, where does that, oh, it's a slippery slope. It totally is. And that's an awesome question. I'm so happy you asked that. Really, at the end of the day, compliance falls under the organization. In this case, what's called the organization's signature That's the oh, defense contractor. Compliance it is, is not an IT matter. Right. Just like cybersecurity is not an IT matter. Sure. It's a board level decision, you know, decision to keep ownership. They have to understand what their risk is, their exposure, the requirements, and what regulation they follow. You can't tell the IT guy that that NIPA is his responsibility necessarily. That really right. ultimately falls on doctor. Now there's there is of course there's always the devil's in the details with everything. Yeah. But it falls in the organization. So even though the CMMC has been out there, are there organizations that still today that have no understanding or maybe they feel like they don't understand all those requirements and they're, you know, they're at risk. They're, you know, there's that potential for disaster. Yes. And there is, I'm going to get back to that in a second. I want to make sure that I realized and didn't make a distinction. The CMRC rule itself, the final rule is, it's not final. It's probably a rulemaking period. Is ended. And we talked about how CMMC is essentially the audited component. They've got to close the loop on the back and make sure that the defense contract did the work they say they're going to do okay. by a third part, right? So yeah. Not by us, by another third part. I would be very clear about that. That piece is currently in the final stage. We're waiting, waiting for a final rule, but it's expected to be included in the defense contract end of 2024, yeah. early 25. Okay. Okay. That piece of it. But I would go back to the requirement to do all the stuff yeah. as lived, as existed for years. Okay. Years. Literally, this is not new. <laughs> I'll say it again, this is not new. It's just new to people out there because CMMC kind of brought it to their board and it took many, many years for this thing to happen. Yeah. Right? Because it was so, it was both through this rulemaking and to achieve from five lower levels to three. Uh, it's it difficult. It's like, what, what's actually going on? Right. But this is no crap. Tim, this is a joke. Yeah. Well, it's here. And it's 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 almost final. Okay. Right? And this is backed by law. It's going to be, it's a control by regulation and all that. So that, I want to make sure I say that piece. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I mean, so the opportunities, there, there's tremendous opportunities still out there. Yes, there are absolutely. So talk to your clients, have that conversation, ask them very simply this question. What are you doing? I'm looking at camera here. What are you doing about Siemens? What have you done? What are you doing? They give you sort of the deer in the headlights. Of, I don't know. Ever heard about it before? Right. No idea. They give you kind of the flight stairs. Listen, this is something that's very serious. Right, actually, really parts of these things are new. You may have done some of it. And they may be in various phases. Maybe they did a gap yeah, assessment a few years ago, but they didn't. Right, we did it part of it. They got partially through it. They could be in various states of kind of part of the term, but disrepair. Right? Sure, they've got it partially through, but it didn't stop. Right, it was financial issue. Yeah, but this is literally a matter for the business. Of yeah, life or death. I want to be sure I talk about. It. Yeah, is that okay? To talk about Absolutely. So what's important to understand here is that the defense contractor does not go through this process. 
Okay. Whenever you have started the process, the risks are huge for that contractor. Okay. So what it could mean is that current contract to have with the DOD as a prime or subcontractor okay. are at risk. Gotcha. If you're found to not have even started the process or even working toward the any compliance, those contracts could be at risk and you could default. So you're saying ignorance doesn't work? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the old adage, right? Right. right. Ignorance in the eyes of law, ignorance is no excuse. Yeah. Right. So, no, unfortunately not. Fuck yeah. cheek, right? Uh uh. Yeah. Right? A little ribbon boat here. Right. But no, definitely not. So, uh, so existing contracts are at risk. Further, future contracts are you can now not be wired because you do not satisfy the base requirements right. to actually participate in a new full stop. Long so, term. Long term potentially, if you have a major defense, I mean, look, if they're most of their business, let's say 50, 60, 80% of their business is to you based, yeah. that could be the death knell. Very easy. What about what about those clients that you have and you're addressing this and they're they're not taking it seriously? Is there a point where you say we just need to walk away because they're potentially a major liability for our organization? Yeah, they they very well could be because here's here's the deal: if you stay involved with them and their MSP, yeah, and they don't do anything but CMMC, you're just like, well, they're paying me every month. Liability, right now. Defense contract to look at this in a positive way where they say, you know what, let's make that investment as quickly as you can. Here. Here's why that's beneficial. They want to do this because they want to do it in front of the contemporaries, the colleagues, the competition in their space. Sure. So they can be uh, positioned to be at least on their way to compliance. So at least they can show and illustrate that they're starting to work around. Okay. They can show the defense department that to me, that's Eric, because now you have opportunity to win contracts. That your competition can't win because they never started. Right. Now is the time. Now is the time. Yeah. Isn't that a great reason to start? Yeah. I think it is. it is. So for any of our audience out there that um, you know wants to venture down this path, but wants a partner to assist them in the process, how can they reach out to you? It's a great question. Dude. So I always say again, I love I love good questions. Yeah. Of course, it's a little self serving, right? Sure. But um, but yeah, if anybody wants to. Let's have a ch- once we'll have a chat. Wants to learn more about it. We do have a, a partner portal, so anybody okay. can go out there can sign up right now with a partner. Exceedcyber.io. Okay, very simple. It's all new information. We'll form. We'll review it. We'll you know we'll then you know, accept your, uh, your your partner yeah uh, your partner request your application. Uh, and then if you want to ask me questions directly, feel free to email me. Okay, email me at Brian at Exceedcyber.io. Excellent. Brian with a I, by the way. Yeah, Brian Exceedcyber.io. Yeah. Any uh, one last party word you'd like to show with their audience? Wrap up. Um, I would say um, be, be aware of the opportunity, but also be aware of the risk. Okay. And so, so make sure that you're you're having conversations. I said it before. Have conversation with the defense clients. Don't put it off. Don't just say, "Oh, you know what? We have to prepare for this." Right. And I feel bad, and I feel maybe uh, you know. Uh, oh, we should have maybe been doing more of this. This will help both of you. Okay. Right? And so look at this as an opportunity. Be the thought leader. Yep. They apply really good to you. Right. Right. And help them. At the end of the day, that's what we're here to do is help each other. Talk about differentiating yourself from the competition. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much. It's Absolutely. been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank for you, you that. Thank you. For all those out there, uh, hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, Till next time, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to The Stack.